There is no politician that can draw a crowd like Maxine as he is drawing it right now. From the CBC atrium, he was rushed out to go to a designated place to do the taping of an interview with Jordan Peterson. And that tape was released yesterday, early evening. Maxime did the taping and then took the red-eye flight to Calgary. He returned today to Montreal to go to Bose for this weekend, you know, the last campaign in his own riding. I was tuning in to see where does the video stand. It was already over 150,000 views. 182, my friend Ronald is telling me. That's the sort of energy that is flowing across this country, which Maxime is writing. It brings to me the line from Shakespeare. There's a tide in the affairs of men, which taken let us flood leads on to fortune. Maxime is riding the tide. I feel, I whispered this to his team, we were together, I feel, and I said that to his regional director who was coordinating his itinerary, that again, another line from Shakespeare, who else should one quote but Shakespeare? Next to the King James Version of the Bible, there is Shakespeare, right? That's my mother tongue. They talk about systemic racism. The Prime Minister with a black face, dressed up in a Bollywood costume. The Canada is systemically racist. Well, 250 years of systemic racism made a brown man a lover of Shakespeare and speak the language of King James Version of the Bible. I want more of that! That is not hyphenated, right? So these guys, they make up these arguments and they think that they're very smart. But they don't listen, they live in a cocoon. Well, Maxim has broken out of that cocoon. I have known Maxim for over a decade when he was a member of the Conservative Caucus and then a cabinet minister. Myself, I was brought into, and Steve is sitting there, so he's a testimony, a witness. I was brought into public affairs or politics by Preston Manning. He knocked my head and said, you want to make a difference, you have to come into the public square. So I was an egghead academic, trying to be and remain an egghead academic. He broke the egg, and here I am. So, it goes, back, it goes back quite a bit. It goes back to the mid-1990s that I got involved. And then I ran in London West in the 2000 election uh, that Christian called before the mandate was over. And those of you who will remember that. Uh, Elliot Trudeau had just died and Kretia took the advantage of the emotions that, that came out of that. And he won his third majority government uh, in 2000. Anyhow, so that's where I was with the conservative, or with the reform, and, and, and then the reform that merged, turned into Canadian Alliance, and then merged with the progressive conservative to make the conservative party. And I think I will not be too wrong to say that was the greatest mistake ever made in the Canadian public scene, where reform that was beginning to build the steam ended up merging with the progressive conservative. And you know what happens when you dilute good wine with rubbish water? You neither have wine nor good water. And that's what the 
conservative party became. Conservative party is now just another liberal light with no taste except me too. Yes. But there was that moment when our friend, our leader, Maxime, was with the Conservative Party. He was in the caucus. And you all know the story. In 2017, on the leadership campaign, after 12 ballots that he was leading, on the 13th ballot, the leadership was stolen from him. So, Maxime was taken out. Uh, the, the cartel people didn't want him and uh, he tried to stay with the party till he was muscled out and he went out and made the party, People's Party, People's Party of Canada in 2018 and here we are. I was with the Conservative Party, I was running for uh, a nomination in London North Centre in 2019, 2018, 2019, and they were not calling the contest. And finally, Andrew Shearer and his underling, Hamish Marshall, called me up and gave me a notice and expelled me from the party. And the reason was, they said, that you are an Islamophobe and we cannot have you in the party because we are not going to be directed away from the discussion. So I was declared the Islamophobe by our leader at that time, Andrew Shearer. So here I am in front of you, the Islamophobe speaking. I wear that as a bag of water. Okay? My crime was to stand up for Canada to point out about what is happening since 9-11 and how we have buckled under to serve the very people and the very ideology that is dedicated to strip away the fundamental values, foundation and identity of what built Canada, what built the United States. I know it from the inside. You might also say, I am Jonah. The whale erupted and I came out of his stomach, you know, so I know who these people are. Many of us, I, I hear Daniela telling the story from Romania. I run across people all the time, and that's what we are running on. People who escape from Eastern Europe. People who have escaped from China, from Hong Kong, from Venezuela, from Cuba, from Africa. We all understand why we found our home, our shelter, our refuge. That we, with our children, can build a new life that our parents, our grandparents never had the opportunity to live. A life to be free. A life to be able to speak freely, to worship freely, to associate freely. The very foundational values upon which one of the freest country was built. And we can see right in front of our eyes that is dissolving. And this is where we are. And we instinctively know, and you all know, what this election is all about. It is about freedom. Maxim understood that. A boy from post Quebec, grown up in the privilege of being a Canadian by birth, who would not know what it mean to have escaped a genocide as I did as a teenager and found home in North America, in Canada. I have met so many people in my campaign in 2019. Lovely, lovely people from Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos who were boat people and arrived eventually in Canada, you know. And completely, completely devoted now to the PPC. It's the only party that is speaking about the value that we have to defend or we are pretty much another Venezuela, another Cuba. Well, under this man, the black-faced Prime Minister, the man who 
has the greatest admiration for the China way. He talked about the Chinese system of government that can make a decision and turn on a dime. And that's what he wants to do, turn on a dime. You see? But a society that turns on a dime is a society that has no consideration for what the dime is. That is people, you and I. We are simply the means for those people who want to turn on a dime. But we are not. We are each one of us an end in ourselves. And so here it is, the most amazing thing, that Maxine understood that. And he understood that not because he was being put on the rack in somewhere called Saddam Hussein, Iraq, or Chinese Tibet. It was right here in the midst of the conservative party where he was being suffocated. He couldn't speak out. And as he said, he left. The party is intellectually and morally corrupt. Because if your foundation is not right, if you have given up on your foundation, that however high a tower you want to build, it will not only be a tower of Babel, but it will be a tower built on sand that is going to fall apart. And that's what we have to do. We have to rebuild our foundation. And PPC has laid it out. And I can tell you, I'm sharing with you about Maxime, because it is so important that each one of us understand that a leader, as I come back to it, you know, the Shakespeare line that I was coming to, as Shakespeare says, some achieve greatness, and to some greatness is thrust upon. With Maxime, it is both. The wind that is at his back that we are seeing in this last bit of the campaign is the greatness that he has worked for with an astounding dedication. He's been on the road. He's been talking to the people. He's been listening to the people. And what he delivers, he is delivering back to the people what he has taken from them. So he's not actually talking to the people. He's talking for the people. You know, he is your voice. And to be someone who achieves greatness for working and to some greatness is thrust upon, we are the people who are trusting the greatness upon him. Because we are discovering that he's the one man who can be held up, who can be thrown into a prison. Here in Canada, just imagine. He couldn't go to the Maritimes to campaign because he is not double waxed. He was picked up in Winnipeg and put in the police car with handcuff on him. No. This is not the story we're talking about in the Soviet Union. This is in Canada. So he is speaking to you, but he's also speaking for you. And so the greatness that has been thrust upon him is where we come in. You know, it is our part that we have to do on Monday. Hopefully, we will do it on Monday. And if we deliver on Monday, if Maxine wins his seat back that the cartel did their best to take him away from in the 2019 election, after having won that seat right through from 2008. He lost it in 2019. Now he gets that seat back and he is surrounded with God knows what will be the eventual numbers. But Wayne Baker, I hope, will be there with Maxine. And there you will have the crack opening up. There will be the PPC standing up where all the other four parties, but particularly Bloc is a regional party for Quebec, the other four parties 
that is the Liberals, the Conservative, the NDP and the Green are bought and sold by the globalists. That's the globalist party in Canada. That's the party that has no fundamental disagreement in the direction that Canada has been moving when many of us were asleep. This did not begin yesterday, did not begin in 2019. Those of you who can take your memory back to the centennial year. It was from the post-centennial year to 2017, our 150th anniversary, you bracket this period off. The government in Ottawa was dismantling the Canada of Sir John A. and Sir Wilfred Laurier. So today, we have a debt in terms of budget deficit that is in the $500 billion range. It's unimaginable. In 2019, our budget deficit when we were campaigning was $30 billion. You do your maths. And our debt, the, the deficit is biting up on our debt. Our debt is now twice the GDP. So when the Prime Minister or Aaron O'Toole or Jagmeet Singh says we are on track, we're going to build back better, you and I know we can only build back better by first putting the wrecking ball into the building, you know, that you want to build back better. They're putting the wrecking ball into our economy. They're wrecking the economy and the country that was one of the most successful economy and society in the modern history of the world. That's what they are doing. That is the Great Reset. That is the COVID-19. That was the 9-11. And now we know, now we know, it is not a conspiracy theory. It is what we are talking about is what the globalists have been conspiring for the last 30 plus year. And we are at the end game. And if we do not wake up and do what we need to do and what we have to do, that is to effectively begin the pushback. Then our children will not be growing up in the country that was a country bequeathed to us by Sir John and by Sir Wilfred. Yeah. It will be the country of the black faced Prime Minister. So my friend, that is the story of this election. That is where we have arrived. Maxine is the captain courageous of Canada at this moment. And we need to hold him up, join together, and go forward. Not only on Monday, but Monday is the beginning. In 2019 election, we were the new kids of the block. We knew all of this was happening. We were the only party. I sat and made with Maxime and his immediate people the policy that Maxim articulated. We were the only party that talked about revoking multiculturalism. We are the only party that talked about having an open discussion on immigration. And we put the numbers there and they called us racist. Is this country a country that belongs to us where we openly talk? Where can we talk? Not only here, but eventually our talking has to be done in the parliament. And if we cannot talk about these issues, then are we a free country? That's where we have arrived. Multiculturalism, the policy pushed 
by the father of the blackface prime minister, which everyone bought. Robert Stanfield did not oppose it, David Lewis did not oppose it, and of course the media loved it. But it was built upon an odious lie. I wrote the book about this. The odious lie is that all cultures are not equal. How can the culture of Sir John A. and Sir Wilfred Laurier be equal to the culture of the Taliban? Yeah. And everything in between. It is not. The whole argument of equality is the argument of the Marxists. It is not. We are not all equal. We have each one of us a unique fingerprint. But yes, my organs I can donate to you and you can donate your organ to each other. But yet we are unique. And the point is that that was the beginning. Multiculturalism. All cultures are equal. And therefore, the slow, insidious way to our school. That's 50 years ago. Think about it. So if you're 60 years old or somewhere right near my age, that's what you have grown up with. Okay, that's what you've internalized. So, the insidious thing, that you cannot question that, because if you can't question it, you are a bigot. The beginning of political correctness. Look where we are at. Many of us knew that. You see? So if you want to say, as Maxim said, our body, our choice. The women have said that 50 years ago with the movement. My body, my choice, you know? And that was again part of the process of dismantling our Judeo-Christian heritage. And so, here we have arrived. If you want to maintain our body, your choice, then you are a neo-Nazi, you are an extremist, you are an anti-vaxxer, and we are going to go after you. See? So it didn't happen all overnight. But here we are. This is the last stop. This is the end game. This is the third scene in the fifth act of Shakespeare. And we have to win. And we are going to put immense responsibility on people like Wayne Baker. And he has very broad shoulders. And he has a partner with similar broad shoulder and she is going to strike him down if he doesn't listen to us but he will listen to us he will carry a voice it is the voice to get back our freedom thank you my friends thank you so much